Allow me to welcome you to the 2023 Research Week kickoff event. Each May, the VA celebrates Research Week to raise awareness of veteran-focused medical research, and today's ceremony is just one of the first of many events happening across this nation, each dedicated to honoring and celebrating VA researchers. This year's theme is Cutting Edge Care Through Research dedicated to showcasing the meticulous efforts of the 3,700 investigators who work daily to discover breakthroughs and support healthy outcomes for our nation's veterans. Today's official party is the Honorable Dennis Richard McDonough, Secretary of Veterans Affairs, Dr. Sharif Elnahal, Undersecretary for Health, and Dr. Carolyn Clancy, Assistant Undersecretary for Health for Discovery, education and affiliate networks. And now, please rise and remain standing for the arrival of the official party, the presentation of colors, and the national anthem. Please be seated. I am pleased to announce our special guests, and I would like to take this time to introduce them. Former Acting Undersecretary for Health, Major General Retired Richard Stone. And former VHA Chief of Staff, Command Sergeant Major, retired, John Jensen.
To these honored guests and everyone else in attendance today, thank you for coming. We are present today to publicly recognize the great work our researchers do year round, which advances the medical care this nation provides to its beloved veterans and improves America's learning health care system. In 2022, VA's Office of Research and Development oversaw and funded more than 18,000 projects across 110 active research sites, distributing more than $2.2 billion in research and resulting in 13,000 research articles. This research enables us to connect veterans with the soonest and best care, supporting their whole health and providing a health system of the highest reliability. Now allow me to introduce Dr. Sharif Elnahal, the Undersecretary for Health. He actually began his healthcare leadership career at VA as a White House Fellow, prior to serving as VA's Assistant Deputy Undersecretary for Health for Quality, Safety, and Value from 2016 to 2018. Dr. Elnahal is no stranger to medical innovations. He shaped COVID-19's response efforts as president and chief executive officer of University Hospital in Newark, New Jersey from 2019 to 2022. He also drove infant and maternal health outcomes as New Jersey's 21st health commissioner. Now please welcome the ninth Undersecretary for Health, Dr. Sharif Elnahal. Thank you so much and good day to everybody. I want to thank our special guests, Dr. Stone, John. Thank you so much for support, continuing to support veterans and for your service prior to my arrival. And I want to thank Dr. Clancy, Dr. Ramoni, Dr. Kirsch, and everybody who propels our research mission across the country in such an effective way. And most of all, thank you to our incredible researchers of all stripes and all disciplines who continue to advance our book of knowledge. What we know is best for veterans continues to improve and to expand because of your incredible work. I want to start with a story, and that story is of a veteran named Sylvester Norman, a 67-year-old Coast Guard veteran from Nashville. He and all four of his brothers had suffered from kidney illness, and an entrepreneurial physician and one of our amazing researchers named Dr. Adriana Hung, also a researcher in our incredible Million Veterans Program, which I'll discuss in a second, noticed that a disproportionate number of black patients hospitalized with COVID were then dying of acute kidney failure. How did she notice? We have one of the most important assets in research on the human genome and clinical outcomes in the world, and that is the Million Veterans Program. 950,000 veterans and counting are now part of the largest genomic database of black Americans across the country. Not only black veterans, but black Americans, 150,000 strong. It is informing insights on the relationship between our genetic code and clinical outcomes in a way that no other database can because we are the largest integrated healthcare system in the United States, and we can glean insights into what happens to veterans and their response to our therapies and treatments, and also important epidemiologic outcomes can be connected to their genomic profiles. And as a result of that incredible asset, Dr. Hung discovered that in about one-eighth of people of African descent who served our country and in our database, Genetic variations in a gene called APOL1 was linked to kidney disease. That seminal discovery is now being translated into action, being considered for FDA approval on a targeted therapy that will be of use for black patients across the country and the world who have this genetic profile and who may contract COVID. That research is only possible at VA because of that incredible asset and most importantly, because of our incredible researchers across the country. 
we are seeing that research is not just one of our statutory missions, but it enables everything we do on behalf of veterans. It enables us to hire the most talented clinician researchers across the country. It is a tool to retain those amazing, talented people over time because they can continue to do groundbreaking research while they are here and in ways that they can't outside of VA. It is enabling us to provide better access to care because the more talented, incredible clinician researchers that we're able to recruit, the more end strength we will have to meet the veteran mission. And of course, it enables the pipeline of training that we offer in VA with 96% of academic institutions across the country in healthcare affiliated with VA. The power of our training infrastructure to build the pipeline of talent into the future is unmatched across the country. Our research mission enables that, and you've certainly been productive this year. 110 active research sites were funded by Dr. Ramoni's team, 3,700 principal investigators, 18,000 projects receiving more than $2.2 billion in research support. We have 118,000 medical professionals collaborating and in our training programs for innovative medical research. And while these numbers are impressive, the impact on veterans we serve is even more profound. Rehabilitation has always been an important part of our research portfolio in VA. And I'll just give you one example of groundbreaking research that's happening in VA Cleveland alongside Case Western University. Doctors and biomedical engineers with substantial research support from VA and the Department of Defense have developed something called an electro-neurological connection that provides a sense of feeling and prostheses for the first time. Danny Werner, a 74-year-old Vietnam veteran who lost the lower part of his left leg in 1969, has volunteered for this study since 2015. The first time he felt the bottom of his prosthetic foot touching the floor, so many decades after his amputation, he thought, wow, this is mind blowing. The feedback from him and so many other veterans who may benefit from this groundbreaking research propels us and inspires us because we cannot do this without veterans. I often say that the group of people who want to help veterans the most are veterans themselves. And through projects like the Million Veterans Program, that is definitionally true. And 60,000 veterans volunteered to take part in clinical trials throughout the pandemic that not only enabled us to make our care better, but made care better across the country for patients with COVID-19. Their willingness to serve our country and wear the cloth of our country could have been enough. But to this day, because they volunteer for such clinical trials, they continue to help their battle buddies, their comrades, the folks who they live for. VA is deeply committed to not taking that for granted ever. And part of the way that's also happening is through President Biden's cancer moonshot. VA research is critical, and it's a big part of that effort because of the size and scope and scale of our research apparatus, the willingness of the veterans we serve to participate in clinical trials, enables us to better care for veterans, and expands the possibilities for reducing cancer mortality with a very ambitious goal that the President set, reducing cancer mortality by 50%. Veterans are a big part of that project. Veterans are helping each other, and as they always have, are helping the entire country through the research mission that we have. So thank you to the honorees here today, all of the researchers, physicians, PhD scientists, nurse researchers, researchers across disciplines, and VA staff for enabling that research. A big shout out to the folks who staff our clinical trials and make sure the research happens to the highest level of fidelity and quality. All of you matter. All of you are making our care better on behalf of veterans. And for that, I am deeply grateful. And once more, thank you to the veterans who make us learn every single day. You inspire me and you inspire all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Elna Hall. 
And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce the Honorable Dennis McDonough. Before coming to VA, he served as the 26th White House Chief of Staff and as Principal Deputy National Security Advisor. He believes deeply, as he testified to Congress, that there's no more sacred obligation nor noble undertaking than to uphold our promises to our veterans, whether they came home decades ago or days ago. Please welcome the 11th Secretary of Veterans Affairs, Dennis McDonough. Dr. Carolyn Clancy serves as the Assistant Undersecretary for Health for Discovery, Education, and Affiliate Networks, or DEAN for short. The DEAN fosters collaboration and knowledge transfer with facility-based educators, researchers, and clinicians within VA and between VA and its affiliates. Please welcome Dr. Clancy to the stage. Dr. Rachel Ramoni is the Chief Research and Development Officer for the Department of Veterans Affairs. She is responsible for developing and executing the strategy for VA's nationwide research enterprise, which encompasses more than 2,000 active projects and a budget of nearly $2 billion, which includes both direct VA support and research funding from outside entities. Please welcome Dr. Ramoni to the stage. And now we will recognize six research investigators for their outstanding contributions to medical science and veteran health care. First, we would like to recognize Dr. Donna Washington, Director of the Health Equity Quality Enhancement Research Initiative National Partnered Evaluation Center at VHA. Dr. Washington is also a staff physician at the VA Greater Los Angeles Healthcare System and a professor of medicine at UCLA's David Geffen School of Medicine. Dr. Washington has devoted her career to addressing the healthcare needs of marginalized and underserved populations and leading groundbreaking research that has identified and continues to break down barriers to healthcare access. She has advanced research methods to study racial and ethnic minority veteran groups and ultimately improved care and research the mortality and reduce the mortality for all racial and ethnic minority groups. Dr. Washington's studies have demonstrated how social determinants of health among racial and ethnic minority groups in the VA can undermine even our best models of care. More specifically, her research provided early warning signals to VA leadership in 2019 about the devastating impact the coronavirus pandemic could have on minority veteran groups. Additionally, her work as the principal investigator on the National Survey of Women Veterans, the first population-based study of women veterans in 25 years, identified previously insurmountable barriers to their awareness and use of VA services. This, in turn, led to the launch of a national call center dedicated to reaching women veterans. Dr. Washington also informed national evidence-based policy for the delivery of comprehensive care for women veterans through foundational research studies and partnered evaluations. In summary, Dr. Donna Washington is a personification of VA's commitment to deliver quality health care to all veterans, regardless of race, gender, ethnicity, or economic background. Dr. Washington, Please come to the stage.
Thank you so much for this incredible honor. Health services research is a team sport, and I have many, many people to thank for my career growth and for the impacts that I've been able to achieve. First of all, I'd like to thank my mentors. My earliest mentors were my parents, who instilled in me my sense of curiosity and really nurtured my desire to build a career in medicine and science. I want to thank the incredible support that I've received from the VA HSRD service, from Query, from CSHIP, which is the HSRD Center of Innovation based in Los Angeles, and early in my career from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Now, I have to say, the support from CSHIP was really incredible. Uh, a testament to that is the mentorship that I received, including one of my mentors, Dr. Beckiano, being recognized here today. My other, one of my other VA mentors being Dr. Paul Shakel. I'd like to acknowledge and thank my operations partners. They asked me the probing research questions that led to the studies that then led to the findings that they used in the service of improving veterans' health and health care. These operation partners included Drs. Ernest Moy and Kenneth Jones in Office of Health Equity, Dr. Patty Hayes in Office of Women's Health Services, Dr. Joe Francis, and others. And then finally, I'd like to thank the veterans without whom we couldn't do the incredible research studies and this, the um, other work that we do. I want to thank the veteran patients that I've had the privilege of caring for because they've inspired some of the research questions that led to some of the studies that I've rec been recognized for today. I want to thank the re veteran research subjects, and I want to thank the veterans in our personal life. So once again, thank you for this incredible honor. Thank you, Dr. Washington. Next, we would like to recognize Dr. Zaid A Ali, Chief of Research and Development at VA St. Louis Healthcare System. Dr. A Ali is also the Senior Clinical Epidemiologist at Washington University in St. Louis. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, no VA researcher has been more influential in shaping our understanding of COVID-19's effects on the human body than Dr. A Ali. At the start of the pandemic, he and his team quickly retooled their laboratory to study COVID and its possible long-term after effects, popularly known as long COVID. Their intense research into the virus has produced several groundbreaking discoveries that have been critical in guiding this nation's public health response. His lab also produced evidence of the effects of vaccines on long COVID the health risk of repeated infections, and the effectiveness of antivirals against COVID and long COVID. He was also a co-chair on the Biden-Harris Administration Committee, and he still serves on the U.S. Interagency Long COVID Coordination Council. He has also been an international advisor on long COVID, providing strategic guidance to the Chief Science Advisor of Canada the World Health Organization, and the United Kingdom government. Dr. Ali's research contributions to the field of epidemiology have been published in the most prestigious medical journals in the world. In fact, his research ranks the top 10 of 23 million research papers tracked by Alcmetric. Having been accessed millions of times, cited more than 100,000 times, and featured in major publications from the New England Journal of Medicine to the New York Times to the Rolling Stone, <laughs> which makes Dr. Ali the closest thing VA has to an actual rock star. <laughs> Dr. Ali, please come to the stage.
really, uh, it's an enormous honor, enormous, enormous honor for me to be here today. So uh, Honorable McDonough, uh, Dr. El Nahal, the amazing Dr. El Nahal, the wonderful Dr. Clancy, and the wonderful Dr. Ramoni. Th thank you very much for the honor again to be here. Uh, if you take anything from my speech, VA is an amazing place to do research. <laughs> VA is absolutely, absolutely an amazing place to do v VA research. Uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve as a clinician, as a researcher, and as a leader within the VA. Enormous honor for me and in, in, in my life. This is really enormously grateful for this, for this honor. Um, very grateful to the long COVID community who inspired us from the beginning of this pandemic to pursue our line of research. Veterans and non-veterans in the US and throughout the world who really inspired us from day one to push through all the obstacles of this pandemic and really produce wonderful research using VA data. Um, you know, grateful to my team who really worked very, very hard and sacrificed a lot, working day and night incessantly to improve our understanding of long COVID. They've sacrificed enormously. They say it takes a village, and indeed it does. It absolutely takes a village. I want to take this moment to recognize Yan Shea, you know, my teammate, who's been with me since day one on this wonderful, wonderful journey of VA research. And it's very, very safe to say that I would not be here today, we would not be able to do this today, you know, without really his help and support from day one. Also, Benjamin Poe, my team member, Young Choi, Evan Shu, and really the whole R&D team in St. Louis, Susan Wood, Erin Olson, and the absolutely wonderful R&D team in, in St. Louis. And finally, really enormous thanks to the VA. You know, really, the, you guys built the infrastructure for us to really be able to thrive and do VA research, not only informing care of veterans and advancing care of veterans, but advancing care of people across the globe. And I think this is really important. So VA is not only helping veterans, it's really helping people in the US and across the globe. So thank you, Dr. Mr. Honorable McDonough. Thank you, Dr. El Nahal. Thank you. You, you've, you know, Dr. Clancy, how much you've done for me. So thank you very much for all the support throughout the years and all the support, Dr. Dr. Ramoni. Enormously, enormously honored to be here on this stage today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ali. Next, we would like to recognize Dr. Elizabeth Yano director of the VA Women's Health Research Network. Dr. Yano is also a senior research career scientist with Health Services Research and Development, the adjunct professor of health policy and management at the UCLA Fielding School of Public Health, and the director of the VA HS R&D Center for the Study of Healthcare Innovation, Implementation, and Policy at the VA Greater Los Angeles Healthcare System. Dr. Yano is one of the foremost experts on women's health research in the VA and has been a pioneer in, evi in using evidence-based care to transform VA into a responsive research community. Her efforts to better focus on veteran priorities have delivered superior quality of care, improved patient experiences, and led to better health care outcomes. As the principal investigator and co-founder of the Women's Health Research Network, which was created in 2010 to promote research that focuses on the unique needs of women veterans, Dr. Yano has dramatically increased the VA's research capacity towards women's health across 76 VA facilities. She also developed the first ever VA Women's Health Research Agenda, which created a roadmap for research action that brought in a national community of researchers. Dr. Yano has removed organizational barriers and facilitated comprehensive care delivery for tens of thousands of women, identified underlying factors that affect the delivery and quality of care, and evaluated alternate models for delivering and improving that care. It cannot be overstated how much of an impact Dr. Yano has has had on the care of our women veterans. Dr. Yano, please come to the stage.
careful if someone brings out a piece of paper. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Secretary, Dr. El Nahal, Dr. Clancy, and Dr. Ramoni. It's admittedly hard for me to fathom receiving this incredible award and recognition today. When I started my VA career in the same year as the Born on the Fourth of July movie, I was told my interest in women's health research would never amount to anything and that the VA would never fund women's health research because of their numerical minority. Yet here I am receiving an award for, all everyth for everything we've accomplished ever since, supporting a national community of women's health researchers, making it easier to conduct women's health research, increasing women's health research funding, and accelerating research impacts on women's health practice and policy. This is only possible because of VA's enduring commitment to being a learning health system, where your research matters, where women veterans' voices are heard, and where VA health system partners listen and lean in. So I share this award with many others. I share it in particular with Dr. Susan Frain and Allison Hamilton, who co-lead the National Women's Health Research Network with me, as well as our program managers who enact our often crazy ideas about accelerating research into practice, Diane Carney, Adriana Rodriguez, Carissa Fenwick, and Ismelda Canello. I also have to thank our health system partners, Dr. Patty Hayes, Sally Haskell, and Amanda Johnson of the Office of Women's Health, Drs. Jennifer Strauss and Laura Miller in the Office of Mental Health and Suicide Prevention, to name just a few, and the Center for Women Veterans for letting us help VA respond to congressional mandates with rigorous, rigorous research and evaluation evidence while disseminating research results to ever larger communities of women veterans so we're not a well-kept secret. None of this work would have been possible without the support and funding of HSRD leaders in VA, including Dr. David Atkins and his predecessors, Drs. Seth Eisen and John Demacus, Dr. Shirley Meehan for grabbing me in a hallway and asking me to, to chair the first VA Women's Health Research Agenda, Linda Lipson, the first ever scientific program manager for VA Women's Health, and now Dr. Amanda Borsky, who's helping us take women veterans' research into the future. I have to thank also VA Greater Los Angeles, which has been my home for research for over 30 years. And never last and never least, least, I dedicate this award to the women veterans who have served this country, past, present, and future, whose lives we aim to improve by using research to better understand their needs and transform their care. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Yano. Next, we would like to recognize Dr. Nicholas Nichols, Chief of Service for Radiation Oncology at VA Greater Los Angeles Healthcare System. Dr. Nichols is also the Associate Professor in Residence and Vice Chair of VA Services for the Department of Radiation Oncology at UCLA. Dr. Nichols' leadership of not just oncology research but also of educational and clinical oncology has put him at the forefront of VA support for President Biden's cancer moonshot and its goal of cutting the death rate from cancer by 50% over the next 25 years. Dr. Nichols and his team developed the first positron emission tomography imaging program within the Veterans Health Administration and demonstrated its value at the molecular level in the planning of radiation therapy for prostate cancer. Dr. Nichols also helped build a collection of subject matter experts and mentors from across the oncology field to form GLA's first prostate cancer clinical research team. In fact, Dr. Nichols serves on no less than 20 committees, boards, task groups, acting as a hub of collaboration from academic institutions to nationwide organizations. Despite still being in the first decade of his VA career, Dr. Nichols has already made his presence felt across the spectrum of this nation's living healthcare system. And all signs point that the significant impacts he made in oncology so far are just the first few of many more to come. Dr. Nichols, please come to the stage.
right. Um, I too have a piece of paper, so I hope I grabbed the right one. There are actually two in there. There were two drafts. So uh, f first off, um, thank you to U.S. veterans. Uh, your service to this nation and its people is the reason why we are here, quite literally the reason why we are here. Thank you. I also want to thank uh, the VA Office of Research and Development, mission-focused research, veteran-centric research. A researcher could not hope for a more worthy objective. I want to thank uh, specifically also uh, Dr. Clancy, Dr. Ramoni, uh, Dr. Myrie for the vision, direction, and organization for all of us and the support of all of us who do research for veterans. So I'll point out also that it was uh, Dr. Myrie who brought me into the VA through the VA Career Development Program, which I recommend for everyone. Um, I'm lucky to be a part of a lot of teams, more and more teams as time passes. Um, VA Greater Los Angeles, I think the best place anyone could work. The Radiation Oncology Service, of which I am a part. The UCLA Department of Radiation Oncology, which I am also a part. Uh, the VA Greater LA Prostate Cancer Center of Excellence, one of the first within VA, led by Matt Reddick, who's also my research mentor and who also brought me into VA, for which I'm very thankful for. A final message to medical students, residents, and fellows, and young investigators who just want to do research that matters. VA is the place to build your home. Thank you, Dr. Nichols. Next, we would like to recognize Dr. Samantha Connolly, health services researcher at VA Boston Center for Healthcare Organization and Implementation Research. Dr. Connolly is also an assistant professor at Harvard's Medical School Department of Psychiatry. In the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, perhaps no innovation in healthcare has been as significant and widespread as the development of telehealth care and virtual sessions, many of which would never have happened without Dr. Connolly. Dr. Connolly's research demonstrated that the effectiveness of telehealth care was well worth the logistical challenges that came with it, and her work has influenced national decision making to create, maintain, and continue the use of video telehealth platforms for the foreseeable future. Over the past three years, Dr. Connolly delivered more than 30 presentations of her findings to local, regional, national, and international audiences. And her work has been cited in everything from U.S. Senate Committee hearings to Time Magazine. Dr. Connolly has also been published in several high-impact medical journals, such as American Psychologist, and her work has been cited more than 1,000 times over the past three years. Her work in the telehealth field has benefited tens of thousands of veterans in rural, um, in rural areas whose physical distance from VA facilities once made healthcare impractical or even impossible. Furthermore, as a clinical psychologist in VA's Boston healthcare system, Dr. Connolly regularly witnesses the impact of telehealth firsthand as she uses it to provide mental health treatment with her own patients. While in many ways, Dr. Connolly is just beginning her career at VA, her desire to increase veterans' access to the highest quality care delivered in the right place at the right time has already made a massive impact on millions of veterans across this country. Dr. Connolly, please come to the stage. Thank you so much. 
Thank you, Secretary McDonough, Dr. Elnahal, Dr. Clancy, Dr. Ramoni, and everyone at ORD for selecting me for this wonderful honor. Um, all of my research that's being recognized today would not be possible without the support of many people who have played an instrumental role during my early career development. Um, I would like to thank my funders. This includes the Vision One Career Development Award Program, the HSRD Career Development Award Program, as well as Query, who have given me the ability to research the questions that I care about. I'd also like to thank my uh, research center directors, including Dr. Alan Gifford, who's here today, and Dr. Renda Wiener. And I'd also like to thank my primary research mentor, Dr. Chris Miller, who's been incredibly generous with his time and support over the past five years. I would also like to acknowledge my many co-mentors and colleagues, both locally and nationally, for all of their guidance and for making coming to work every day a truly positive experience. In addition, I would like to thank my operational partners. This includes VA Boston Chief of Staff, Dr. Michael Charnas, who's been a constant champion of my work, as well as my national partners, Drs. Leonie Hayworth and Kevin Galpin at the Office of Connected Care, as well as Dr. Kendra Weaver at the Office of Mental Health and Suicide Prevention, who've always made my research feel like a priority as they're engaging in national decision making. And of course, I'd like to thank my family, who've been my biggest cheerleaders from the very start, and I'm so very grateful for their constant love and support. And lastly, I would just like to say how lucky I feel to work for an organization that places such a high value on research and on translating that research into meaningful change to improve veterans' health care. Um, it's truly been a privilege to have the opportunity to contribute to that mission, and I look forward to continuing to do so as I continue to develop my career at the VA. So thank you very, very much for this honor. I'm truly grateful for the recognition. Thank you, Dr. Connolly. And last but not least, we would like to recognize Dr. Rory Cooper, director and founder of the Human Engineering Research Laboratories, a collaboration between the VA and the University of Pittsburgh established in 1994. Dr. Cooper is also a FISA Foundation, Paralyzed Veterans of America, Distinguished Professor of Rehabilitation Engineering at the University of Pittsburgh, a senior career scientist at the VA, and civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army for Pennsylvania West and U.S. Army veteran. Recently inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame for his in inventions in mobility technology, including a hand rim for wheelchairs and a digital joystick that compensates for impaired hand and arm function, Dr. Cooper has devoted his life to the pursuit of using technology to improve the quality of life for disabled veterans like himself. His research team at HERL holds patents on more than 25 innovations in wheelchair designs, and they do extensive research on assistive robots, brain machine interfaces, transfer biomechanics, virtual reality, and more. They have even invented a robotic wheelchair that can climb stairs. Furthermore, Dr. Cooper has designed research equipment used in laboratories and training facilities around the world, including to prepare athletes for Paralympic Games. Dr. Cooper is a fellow of the National Academy of Inventors. He has also earned the Samuel J. Heyman Service to America Award, the IEEE Biomedical Engineering Medal, and the John P. McGovern Science and Society Medal. Notably, he even has his own trading card from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. <laughs> Dr. Cooper's innovations are being used by more than a quarter of a million people of all ages and walks in life, leaving an unquestionable impact on both medical science and society as a whole. Dr. Cooper, please come to the stage. Thank you. 
Well, great, thank you. Normally I wouldn't use notes, but I didn't want to mess up this occasion. But um, thank you very much for this recognition. And thank you for so many friends in the, in the room. I won't recognize them all, but my you know, leadership of VA Pittsburgh Healthcare System, former leadership and actually fellow Army veteran, Rich Stone, uh, and, uh, and Secretary, Mr. Secretary, Under Secretary, Carolyn and, and Rachel, thank you too. Um, I first like to say the, the VA has played an important role in my life for over 40 years, as has my wonderful wife, Rosa Marie. <laughs> who recognized potential in young E4 and stayed with me through uh, many trials and tribulations. Um, I could never imagine as a young Army soldier that after my life-altering injuries, that the VA would play such an important role in my life and as it has in the lives of so many other veterans. VA taught me life skills, introduced me to adaptive sports such as, na such as the National Veterans Wheelchair Games. VA supported my education, provided me a postdoctoral fellowship, and pre provided me a career um, and was also there for the final resting place of my best friend, Sergeant Charles Reedy. The opportunity to serve other veterans is truly a calling, and the holistic and team-oriented approach to research and development is, is the ideal environment within the VA. Um, working across all of our ID, but especially within the Rehabilitation Research and Development Services and the Technology Transfer Program. Our team within the Human Injury Research Laboratory is truly world class and does amazing work, and has helped over million, uh, has helped millions of Americans. It's actually fun for me that I can travel around the world, and across the Emirates, and see technology that we've created within the VA, and how it's changed people's life. Contrary to what some of the people have said earlier, the VA Pittsburgh Healthcare System is the best VA in the United States. <laughs> And um, it's a caring and innovative environment and has been for the 30 years that I've been working there. Also, I'm very grateful to our academic affiliate, the University of Pittsburgh. It's a great place to work and it's truly a world-class institution. I'm honored to work with outstanding veteran service organizations like Paralyzed Veterans of America, Disabled American Veterans, Student Veterans of America, and Wounded Warrior Project and others. And I understand the secretary made a few more remarks to my friends at the Paralyzed Veterans of America this morning. So I had a secret network there, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a I'm also pleased to remain engaged with the Army and become connected to the other, to the Marine Corps, the Air Force, and the Navy. Most of all, I'm grateful for the opportunity to play a part, to be a part of a team that makes a real and positive difference in the lives of veterans. And I'd like to thank everyone who has worn the cloth, cloth of our nation and to their families and to their loved ones, for all have served. Lastly, I have a gift to present to the Secretary. One of the things that we do that's a, a little bit unique for the VA is we actually have many veterans that work within our center and we offer wounded, injured, and ill veterans to come and work with us and learn about what we do as engineers and as researchers. And one of the projects that we have to make is uh, a business card holder or a name tag. And we had the, I had them work with me to make one for the secretary. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Cooper. And thank you to everyone in our VA network, our on, on that research team, for the work you do to make a difference in the health care of our veterans and our nation. All of our investigators are living proof of the significant impact research has had on how VA advances its mission of caring for those who have served, served our nation's military and for their families, their caregivers, and their survivors. I would like to thank the National Association of Veterans Research and Education Foundations, or NAVREF, for their help supporting this event. And a special shout out to VHA Broadcast Center for their help in making this happen. Thank you all for attending or tuning in and be on the lookout for more research events in the weeks coming ahead near you. This concludes our program. Refreshments are available in the back of the room. Thank you all for joining.